boys and girls, thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Content for Kids. We're going to start off with continuing to learn the song that we started last episode. It's called My Jesus, I Love Thee. And if you recall, we learned verse 1 and verse 2 last time. So we are going to sing verse 3 and verse 4 today. And maybe next week we'll do a review and do all of them. But let's get started right in verse 3 and verse 4 of My Jesus, I Love Thee. <laughs> verse 1 again, which is so beautiful. My Jesus, I on our Fruit of the Spirit book. If you've been with us in the other episodes, you will have a bunch of these lovely and fun pages where we kind of featured a different Fruit of the Spirit every week. We also have a nice cover, and we just have a couple left before we put this book together. And I'm hoping that this book will be a good reminder on what the Fruit of the Spirit looks like in our lives, because we're children of God. When you believe in Jesus and you place your faith in him and you believe with all your heart how he came to earth to die for your sins and he rose again, we become children of God and he gives us the Holy Spirit to indwell our own hearts and to help us live a holy life because we want to please God. We want to live a holy life. Holy means good and perfect and righteous. But we can't do that on our own, which is why we need Jesus. And the wonderful thing about Jesus is that he indwelling us will help all of these wonderful fruits come out of our lives. He's the reason. Because he is holy, he can make us holy. So we were in Galatians reading about the fruit of the Spirit. And we are on the word faith. Now this is a very, very wonderful thing. Faith is what makes it possible for us to be children of God. And we're gonna talk about some of the verses that we're going to write on the page. But first, we're going to start with our craft. So what we do is we're going to write faith in maybe some bubble letters. This is a little bit of a shorter word, so you can have fun with that, F-A-I.
after you've made F-A-I-T-H, we're going to cut it out into bubble letters and do it however big you want. set that aside. We'll be pasting that at the top of the page. And now we're going to do a fun background page. You can do it like your other backgrounds or you can do something a little different. I'm going to do it a little different today. I'm going to do some more white in mine. More. Sometimes I fill in every color but I think I'm going to leave some white parts and that'll be Okay, so that's my decorative page for the background. And now we're going to talk about what we're going to write. What we're going to write for the verses of faith. So faith is very, very deep. So we're going to talk a little bit about it. My dad says faith is the only thing that you can do without doing anything. Faith is just simply believing and we know that we can believe in every single thing God has told us God is perfect he cannot lie and Jesus Christ has a perfect love for us everything he did was out of love for us and he told us by having a simple faith in everything he did on the cross and how he was raised from the dead we are adopted into the heavenly family. Now, do you have a birth certificate that tells you that? No, it is by faith. You have to choose to believe the Bible, but we can believe the Bible because we know it's written by God and he's God. He's perfect and he's wiser than anything, anyone we could ever, ever even try to imagine. So the first verse we're going to write out is walk by faith and not by sight. Now this is kind of what every Christian, every child of God will learn and will sing about and just encourage each other about is that we don't always see everything. We have to believe it without seeing it. We weren't there. We weren't at the cross. We didn't see that Jesus died and rose again. But we have faith because it's written in the Bible and God cannot lie. 
So again, we put faith in that. We put faith that Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will have eternal life. Now, can we see eternal life? No, but we know it's true because God said it, Jesus said it. So we have faith in his promise that he will give us eternal life in heaven. And that's what's so encouraging as, as just as we go through life and we have all these life lessons and we grow up knowing that we don't have to see it. We can just simply trust in the Lord and everything he says. So let's do that one first. Walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by faith, not by sight. The next one we're going to do is taken from a verse in Romans. It talks about how we received the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Now the Holy Spirit is another thing. We can't see it, can we? But we're told and we can believe in the words of God that when we believe in Jesus Christ and we enter the body of Christ, that's what the Bible says, we become a part of the body of Christ when we believe in him. We're given the Holy Spirit. Now, is it something we just have to believe that we're given? Yes, we don't see it, but we can feel it because we have the strength of Jesus in the Holy Spirit and he is indwelling us. So let's write that one out. Receiving the promise of the Spirit through faith. The reason receiving the Spirit is so important is because if we don't have the Holy Spirit indwelling us, we cannot be holy. That means we can't please God, and that means we can't go to heaven. So when God made a way for us to have the Holy Spirit, He made a way for us to go to heaven. He made a way for us to be holy through Jesus Christ, being holy within our hearts. And the last one I'm going to do is, by grace are you saved through faith. Now, can we see the grace of God? No, but we have faith that what he wrote in his word is true and we know it's true. And he has told us when we believe in Jesus and we know that his blood covered all of our sins, God has grace towards us. He sees us perfect and holy, not because of what we did, but because Jesus came and washed all of our sins away. And that's how we become saved. That is how we know that we're promised eternity in heaven. There's a lot of people that think that they can just do good things. They don't believe in what Jesus did. They just want to do good things and think that if they do good things, God will let them into heaven. But that is not by faith, is it? They're trying to get up, they're trying to get to heaven by them own, their own selves. And God said that is not gonna work because we can never be perfect on our own. We need Jesus, and we have Jesus. He has been given to us, God gave him to us to help save us, and he did just that. So this is such an important verse. By grace are you saved through faith. It's so amazing and it's so easy. And that's how amazing God is. He didn't want it to be hard. He wanted every child to understand. All you have to do is believe. By grace are you saved through faith. We are going to do one more because it is a, such an important one. 
And this one is Stand Fast in the Faith. And I think the reason that God told us that is because as you get older, you might have people that come and tell you how you should get to heaven, how you can please God. And a lot of people won't tell you it's just by faith in Jesus Christ. They're going to tell you you have to do all sorts of things to make God happy. They're going to tell you that you have to go to church or you have to do something very special and specific to make God happy. Now those things, if you are serving God, they do make Him happy, but they only make Him happy if you have trusted in Jesus Christ for your salvation. And so you can tell anyone who tries to make you do anything besides faith, you can say, nope, I'm going to stand in the faith that God told me I need to have in Jesus Christ. I'm going to believe in Jesus Christ and I'm going to believe that he took all my sins away because he told me he did. And that's how I'm promised eternity in heaven. And that can save and change a lot of people's lives because they're not afraid if they're good enough anymore because they know they're good enough because Jesus made them good enough by taking all their sins away. So let's do that last one. Stand fast in the Faith. Stand fast. I know this can be a little bit confusing, but I just am so grateful that you guys are learning about faith and understanding this at a young age because it will make your, your Christian life so free and joyful to know that in, through faith you are seen holy in God's eyes and he loves you and he'll give you all the strength you need through Jesus Christ to live a wonderful life. So now we're going to take a glue stick and we are going to paste all of our cutout pieces onto the page. So this is our faith page. We learned a lot and talked a lot about it. So thank you for joining me and we'll see you next time. Today we are learning about lynxes. Let's get started. Okay, lynxes are cats. A small wild cat peeks through the low branches of an evergreen tree. This wild cat looks like a house cat, but it is much bigger. The wild cat has long fur around its face. Spiky black hairs stand up from the tips of its ears. This wild cat is a North American lynx. The lynx belongs to the cat family. The cat family has big cats such as tigers and lions and all big cats can roar. It has small cats, such as cougars and bobcats. Small cats cannot roar. The North American lynx is a small cat. A male lynx weighs about 25 pounds. A female lynx weighs a little less. A lynx is about two feet tall and three feet long. The lynx fur is short and thick. Its winter coat is smoky gray. The lynx fur turns red brown in the summer. The fur on its belly and the insides of its legs is light colored. Fur keeps the lynx warm in the cold weather. It keeps rain and snow away from the lynx skin. Some of the lynx fur is black. The lynx has tufts of black fur at the tips of its ears. The tufts look like paintbrushes dipped in black point. The lynx's short tail has a black tip. A ruff of fur forms a collar around the lynx neck. Sometimes the ruff makes the lynx look like it is wearing a bow tie. The ruff helps keep the lynx warm. A lynx has strong legs. They help the lynx run fast. The lynx back legs are longer than its front legs. The long back legs 
help the lynx jump. A lynx has large furry feet. The bottom of a lynx foot looks like a baseball catcher's mitt. Thick fur grows around in between the foot pads. The lynx feet spread out when it walks. Its feet act like snowshoes. They keep the lynx from sinking into deep snow. A habitat is the natural home where an animal lives. The North American lynx lives mainly in Canada and Alaska. Other kinds of lynxes live on the other side of the world. The Eurasian lynx makes its home in the forests of Eastern Europe and Asia. The Spanish lynx lives only in Spain. A North America lynx looks for a home far away from people. It lives in thick forests. The lynx roams the forest's rock ledges, brush, and swampy ground. The forest is cold in winter and the snow is deep, but the lynx knows how to survive in harsh weather. Aren't they beautiful? They remind me of a big house tabby cat. Each lynx chooses its home range. A home range is the area where a lynx lives, hunts, and raises its young. Can you see how cute those kittens are? They look like house kittens. It sprays urine on bushes and trees at the edges of its home range and it leaves droppings. Scratching trees is another way the lynx might mark its home range. All of these markings tell other lynxes to stay away. Home ranges are different sizes. A lynx home range is small when there is plenty of food. A lynx needs to travel farther when a food is hard to find. Then its home range is bigger. Like other cats, the lynx is a carnivore. Carnivores eat meat. The lynx is also a predator. Predators hunt other animals for food. Animals that are hunted for food are prey. The North American lynx's favorite prey is the snowshoe hare. The lynx also eats red squirrels, birds, mice, voles, and other small animals. A lynx sleeps during the day. It wakes up at night to hunt. The lynx needs to kill one small animal every few days to survive. The snowshoe hare makes up most of the lynx diet. That means a lynx must kill about 150 to 200 snowshoe hares a year. The number of lynx grow when there are a lot of hares to hunt, but sometimes there are too many hares. They eat all the plants in an area. The hares run out of food. With no food, hares die. Then lynxes do not have enough to eat. With no food, lynxes die. The number of hares and lynxes goes up and down over time. The lynx is a good hunter. It chases its prey. A lynx can run about 30 miles per hour for short distances. The lynx can jump as far as 15 feet. It can also jump eight feet into the air. That is almost as high as a basketball hoop. Jumping helps the lynx catch its prey. A lynx uses the sharp claws on its feet to hunt. It scratches a tree or log to sharpen its claws. When a lynx is not using its claws, it retracts them. The lynx pulls its claws into its paws. Retracting the claws helps them stay sharp. A lynx's eyes and ears are important for hunting. The lynx eyes are much stronger than people's eyes. The lynx might be able to see a snowshoe hare from a thousand feet away. This distance is about the length of three football fields. The lynx also sees better in the dark than other cats. A lynx ears can hear higher and fainter sounds than people's ears do. The tuft of hair on the end of each ear acts like a radio antenna. The tufts pick up very soft sounds. The lynx listens for the sound of its prey moving. Then it creeps toward the sound. The lynx gets ready and then it springs on the animal. The lynx bites the prey to kill it and then begins to eat. Lynx families. A female lynx searches for a den when she is ready to give birth. She looks for a hollow log, a rocky ledge, or a tangle of brush. She wants her den to be a safe and dry place to raise her kittens. The female lynx makes the den soft. She lines it with hairs and evergreen needles. Most lynx kittens are born in May or June. 
a mother lynx usually has four to five kittens, but she may have only two or three kittens when food is scarce. The mother lynx raises her kittens alone. The father lynx does not help. Lynx kittens are helpless when they are born. Kittens weigh about seven ounces at birth. That's about the weight of a can of a tuna fish. One kitten could fit inside of a cereal bowl. Do you see how cute that little kitten is? The mother lynx stays close to her kittens to keep them warm. She purrs and meows. She uses her nose to push the kittens towards her belly. Each kitten finds a nipple on her belly and they begin to nurse. Nursing is drinking mother's milk. The kitten's eyes are closed at birth. The kitten opens its eyes. When it is about two weeks old, the kitten's eyes are bright blue, but they will change to yellow after a few months. The kittens begin to explore their den on wobbly legs. They also play fight with each other. Playing helps them learn how to hunt. Soon, the kittens pounce on anything that moves. The kittens stay near the den. They sleep or play when their mother goes hunting. The mother lynx starts bringing the kittens meat when they are one month old. They eat the meat, but their mother's milk is still their main food. The kittens follow their mother on short trips when they are six weeks old, but they cannot hunt yet. They feed on animals that their mother kills. The mother lynx teaches her kittens how to catch prey. The kittens start to hunt when they are six to eight months old. Sometimes the mother and kittens hunt as a family. Sometimes a kitten hunts alone. The kittens practice. They get better and better at catching their own prey. Young lynxes leave their mother when they are about nine months old. The young lynxes stay together for a few months. Then they each find their home range. A wild lynx lives for about 10 to 15 years. lesson we have a couple things that we're going to talk about the first one is the song that we learned let's talk a little bit about what we're singing so in verse three we sing i'll love thee in life i'll love thee in death and praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath now do you know what lend means lend means to borrow or to let someone use it or have it for a while and I love that line in the song because it reminds us that we're only on earth for a little while and we're only here because God gave us breath. He's the one who is allowing us to live here. And we're saying in the song, I'll love you in life and in death as long as you lend me breath. And it reminds us that our mission here to spread the gospel is very important because we won't be here forever. And then the next one is, and say when the death dew lies cold upon my brow, if ever I loved thee, my Jesus, tis now. And that's talking about when we are about to die and leave this earth, we know that we love Jesus still in that time and that he'll be faithful to take us to heaven. And then the verse four is, in mansions of glory and endless delight, I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. This is when we're in glory, when we're in heaven. After we've died and left this earth, we're going to be in mansions of glory. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow. If ever I loved thee, my Jesus, tis now. Did you kids know that there's a crown waiting for every single one of us? Every child of God, everyone who believes in Jesus, God has promised us a beautiful crown. And when you serve the Lord with all your heart and you let Jesus work through you, there's jewels that go upon that crown. 
it's just another way that God rewards us for loving him and serving him. Isn't that exciting? And then we're going to talk a little bit about faith because faith is what we did in the craft and we talked about some of those verses. All of these beautiful things that we talk about, all of these things, having joy and love, trusting in the Lord Jesus, knowing that he'll take us to heaven, that's all because we have faith in his amazing name, the name of Jesus Christ. We know that is our God and our Savior. We believe that with all our heart because the Bible has told us about him. And we can't see him with our eyes, but we know he is there. It's a promise. And also, we can feel his strength when we call upon the name of Jesus to help us do the right thing. And we know he is waiting to be our strength. He makes us strong enough for anything we need to do. And all of this is possible through faith. So when you think about your mission in helping others come to Jesus and have eternal life in heaven someday, it's so simple. It's so easy to explain how to become saved. It's just by believing. It's just by faith. They don't have to do anything with their hands. They don't have to go anywhere. They just have to believe on Jesus Christ and know that he came to take away their sins and that he made them white as snow through his blood that washed them all the sins away. So that's a really, really wonderful thing God has given us, a very wonderful and easy message to tell others about Jesus. It's just very wonderful and exciting, and you can be a part of something so big and bold and amazing and you can watch people come to Jesus just because you chose to talk about him and explain it and that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm.